What is up ladies and gentlemen, man here, welcome back to Z channel, welcome back to another video, to another episode about flexibility, that's the topic of the day, we are going to talk about flexibility and especially leg flexibility as I think that this is the most important kind of flexibility when it comes to climbing for the simple reason that it's gonna allow you to step footholds much more accurately, much quicker, much more precisely and it's going to uh, increase the fluidity of your climbing a lot by doing so. Now, as you can see, I'm trying to demonstrate here in the background the usual, the, uh, you know, regular beginner who doesn't really have a lot of precision in his toes, doesn't have a lot of flexibility in his, hi in his hips and legs, and therefore has kind of trouble, you know, to um, move fast through a traverse like that. Now, on the other hand, when we have this kind of flexibility, we can really make big steps to the side, as you can see. Cross stepping is easy um, and big moves to the left here, um, you know, kind of really stretching apart the hips and kind of using all that range of motion. But to be honest, where do we need that really? Uh, not really in indoor climbing and also very rarely on very rare occasions in outdoor climbing. So I think I have the feeling that uh, flexibility is not so much more of, uh, you know, at least uh, beyond a certain point. That you can reach footholds which are even farther away it's rather that you can reach those footholds which are in your reach already much quicker and much more precisely and thereby it's going to increase your fluidity the fluidity of your climbing but anyway so much for the preface uh, the plan for this video is that i'm going to show you my routine i made videos like that in the past already you can check them out here i think i'm going to try to link them um, but this question about flexibility, honestly, it gets asked time and time again. So I feel I can't even make enough videos about this topic. Also, my routine changes here and there slightly, a little bit. I'm also making some gains here and there all the time. So I feel like it's kind of appropriate to update you, you know, every few months or something on this topic, how it goes, basically. So yeah, the plan is to show you what I do essentially. I started as always with my mobilization routine that I just showed you. Um, there's another video to that, I think, that I can link you. Um, it's basically just moving around with shoulder joints and elbow joints and wrists, uh, hips, knees, ankles. You know, just by moving all these joints to their limit, to their range of motion, you kind of stimulate the little cells that make up the lining of your cartilage to s secrete this you know, lubrification, lubrication fluid into your joints and thereby increasing your range of motion even further, warming you up a little bit, um, reducing the chance for injury and stuff like that. So when I'm finished with the mobilizing, I start with the actual stretching. I already showed you some kind of basic stretches here. Um, this one is the big step forward. I don't know how it's called in English, to be honest. Um, it's basically preparing myself for the front split, which is one of the main courses, I would say, of my stretching menu. The other main course being the side split, uh, the preparation, uh, the pre preparation <laughs> stretch for that you have seen before. It was this lateral Shaolin Kung Fu-like position. And then I already start with the main courses, which is the side split. And this was always one of my stronger, or yeah, it's the stronger one of my splits when it comes to the front split and the side split. I'm much better at the side split compared to the front split. And I think this has something to do with my past in uh, combat sports and martial arts and stuff, because I did uh, Taekwondo and kickboxing when I was in my teens for a little bit and then also Shaolin Kung Fu before I got into climbing and this was basically the main stretch that we did a lot during these times the side split so I really have kind of a good basic constitution I would say when it comes to lateral hip flexibility um, when it comes to the execution of all these positions there's a lot of debate and a lot of discussion going on when it comes to pain threshold the amount of time that you should hold each position how often per week you should actually stretch and stuff so i'm just gonna try to give you my basic opinion here about these topics just a little bit of a, a side view here on lateral split you should aim to keep your back straight all the time try to not um make a severe round back when moving forward rather uh, stretch a little less but try to keep your back straight you know keeping a straight back will really accentuate the stretch where it should be uh, yeah where it should be essentially in these 
tendons and ligaments and muscles of the um, hind the hind thigh i think it's called so yeah slowly we're getting into the into the range of pain here you know when you're holding this long enough then it starts to hurt a little bit and of course yeah should you go to the pain threshold that's the uh, first question here and i think honestly yes uh if you want to make gains it's it's you know it's like with everything in in sport you gotta go to a certain level where it hurts a little bit but where you still don't injure yourself this is, is walking a fine line i know and especially when you're a beginner you don't really know where this point is but i would say just go to the pain threshold where it starts to hurt just a little bit and try to hold this position at least 10 seconds and maximum maybe 20 seconds I mean, you know, these these time uh, things, they are kind of arbitrary, I know, completely. And I can't give you a confirmation on that, that that's good or not, or not. But that's what I do simply and that what's work, that's what worked for me. I never got injured while stretching. I should mention this maybe as well. So something about this doesn't work so bad at least. Um, yeah, so I'm holding the front split since it hurts a lot more, since I'm a lot more unflexible in the front split here. Um, I hold this for a lot, a lot shorter time, I think around 20, 25 seconds or something. In the side split, I honestly, I sit there for like two, three minutes or something, moving around, moving to the sides, you know, moving to the front, trying to really get into those muscles and only after two, three minutes it starts to hurt a little bit and then I basically stop. And here you, we have the front split with the right leg forward, which is by far my better one, which is pretty interesting as well. Since you have two different front splits, actually, there's always a, a better one and a weaker one. And this is actually my better one. Maybe I have a couple of words here from the front view. You should always try to keep your upper body as much to the front as possible, you know, as much parallel to the plane of the camera here as possible, so to say. Um, which is something that I don't really um, I am good at. My hips kind of always want to fall into the side split again. That's why it's very, very tilted here. Uh, but yeah, I try my best. So yeah, what, what you can do. Now, with the main courses, I like to do it this way that I always repeat them once. So I don't split, uh, I don't make the side split once and then go to the front splits and then I'm done basically with my stretching routine. No. Do it one more time, both of these. And the reason for that is that doing it in a second time, you will really feel that your range of motion has increased a lot just by um, the first repetition of your stretch, you know. And that's why I do it the second time here because I really want to make gains, you know. I want to um, get into the tissues a little bit further with that second repetition. As you can see, I'm always trying to reach my, to grab my toe here with the opposite hand. This is something that um, is actually not that easy. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's kind of a nice goal to have just to be able to grab those those toes And as you can see when you do it on a soft mat like this you have the Really nice feature that you can grab the front corner of the mat and kind of pull yourself forward a little bit again trying to keep that back straight and You know get the stretch into where it belongs and after that I always try to make a little bit of a body strength warm-up as well at the same time You know trying to do one of these handstand ups and stuff like that So yeah, that was the second round of the side split. Let's do the second round of the uh, front split left leg front first the weaker one the less flexible one um, yeah, slipping into that position is already kind of a struggle if you're uh, not very flexible um, yeah, and now the better one here, right leg in front. Again, this one I, oh, don't, I don't hold it longer than 25 seconds or something. The side split I always hold like 2-3 minutes. And in between the exercises, in between the stretches, you know, kind of try to shake out everything all the time and get that blood flow going again and, you know, yeah, warm everything up at the same time. Now, this is exactly what I mean. I know this very well from the combat sports and from martial arts. Uh, as a martial artist, when you're kicking a lot, you kind of have this natural feeling for uh, the position of your foot in the 3D, in the three-dimensional room, you know. And you're, it's really easy for you to, like with your arms, hit certain objects kind of accurately. Um, and this is something that 
we have to keep in mind that beginners often don't have as well in, in rock climbing just as well as in combat sports and stuff like that and i noticed from myself personally as well because i had a really bad foot injury once in my climbing career and i was forced to train only with one foot for like three months or something because i was wearing a cast on the other one and when i got off the cast and was able to put on a climbing shoe again it was just fascinating how bad i was at stepping with that foot it was my left foot um, and I literally couldn't hit any footholds with my left foot because my precision in my left foot was completely gone. Here in the background you can see a couple of exercises that you can try to do after you've stretched, you know, after you've increased that range of motion, really kind of hit those footholds really quickly, you know, kind of uh, make a little routine um, and try to get into those footholds really quickly. Another thing I want to mention is that uh, again, if you're flexible, stepping certain footholds which are in your range already is going to be a lot easier. And this is something that you can feel in your lateral abs very often actually, because your lateral abs are those muscles which are pulling your leg up if you want to step really high, for example. So if you have a lot of resistance in your legs for stepping high, uh, your lateral abs have to work a lot more and this is going to cost you nerve capacity, brain capacity that you might lack in your fingers and then you slip off your handhold maybe. And maybe you would blame that on missing finger strength but in fact it was missing flexibility and you had to you know, put all that effort into your lateral ab muscles pulling that leg up and pulling yourself off that uh, handhold, so to say. So you never know where, um, you know, the missing flexibility uh, acts out in your climbing performance, so to say. I think that's basically it for this video, my friends. That's my actual routine at the moment. Uh, I think there are some gains coming in flexibility. I hope you've got something from it. Again, I think the biggest uh, advantage of flexibility is, that is the one that's going to make your climbing a lot more fluid. This is something you can feel a lot on rope climbing actually and also especially on climbing outdoors I have the feeling. So anyway guys, uh, yeah, if you have any questions post them down below, leave a like, leave a comment. If you appreciated the video, I certainly appreciate that um, because it helps a lot and I see you soon in the next one. Bye.